Just throwing up my gum before this little video so my tongue doesn't get tied. Uh, I'm gonna take off where we left off. Yesterday, yesterday, I had put some transmission down inside the cylinders, put the spark plugs back in. Uh, we went to town, we were in town last night, so we decided to pour some of this in. It is a, what's it called? Acetone. Yeah, acetone, 100% acetone. Uh, that's in the cylinders too with the transmission fluid. I've used the crown the penetrating fluid to do everything I'm thinking that the, the penetrant did its job because Every cylinder in this car or every stem and cylinder in this car looks it looks good in the exhaust ports and the I can't see on the on the uh, fuel side, but on the exhaust side it really looks good. I took some time last night and cleaned up inside there, just, you know, spraying with penetrate and wiping with the fingers, trying to blow out whatever you could. Um, yeah, I took the spark plugs out before I put the transmission fluid in there. And I, this is what I know for sure. This is what I know for sure. When you think you have something down inside your spark plug hole, uh, when you go to try to suck it out, that does not work. That does not work. What works is, you take and put air in the cylinder and it'll blow it out. Like yesterday, before I did all the, put all the transmission fluid in and all that stuff, I took all the spark plugs out and I noticed there was shit down in there. So I tried to clean it out a little bit. I knew that the exhaust port was open on number one, a uh, number one here. I knew it because I could see it from this side. So I knew, this is what I knew. If I blew air down in that cylinder, Whatever was in there could come out the exhaust port because that exhaust port was open. I knew that. It wasn't open that far, but it was open. As I blew, put the air hose down in there, out almost come a candle. A, a candle, I'm serious. A big chunk of uh, wax come out of the top of the hole. Um, a little piece, of, little piece of weld, round weld come out. And I know that's how you get something out of the top of the or top of your engine is you put air down inside of it. You can't dig it out. You can't vacuum it out. You blow it out. And I know it works because when you when I suck an air hose inside that hole, where does it come out? It comes out hitting you right in the face. Anytime you get into a corner or if you get into something, when you put the air to it, it blows right back at you. When you want to clean a cylinder out, blow air and it'll come right back out at you. Come right back. I cleaned everything out of that cylinder. I don't. You know, it was quite amazing when I was bringing it out that, you know, a chunk of candle, like it was, we had wax around that. And you could tell that it went down around the threads and wound itself down in there or it had fell in there. But I got a couple pieces of metal out of one cylinder. We're going to shove the camera down inside so everybody can see. But what I'm, what, as we're going right now, if, if, if nobody has watched this video yet, we have got three broken spark plugs out of this engine. We weld it on the top of them, put washers down, then put nuts down on top of them, we turned them out. We had four uh, valves that were stuck, and the valves were stuck open. Uh, we did not turn the engine over, but the valves were stuck open. So we started lubricating with the penetrant inside here on the, on the valve stems. Uh, I'm glad we didn't make the mistake and score one of them. I'm glad we didn't do that, because that's a no-no. You know, as I'm thinking it over my brain, you know, I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. I'm not saying I'm a big mechanic or anything. I'm just thinking what's going on. I should be allowed, that's what you should be doing is thinking. Um, as Doug was telling me, uh, the engine is a no interference engine. So it means that nothing will interfere with each other as long as the timing chain is in gear. Once the timing, chain, timing gear chain breaks or something with the timing breaks, well then, something will happen and you'll bend a lot of stuff. Well, this is what I'm telling you. We know, or we know, or we've shown many times that the timing chain is not broken or at any, at any sort. Um, when I put the, when I put the transmission fluid, you know, there's nothing hitting anything because it, because the timing has not been changed. If you know what I'm saying, everybody's saying the, the valve's bent. No, no, it's non-interference engine. Nothing is going to hit anything as long as the timing's in place. So that theory is out that 
something's going to hit, the valve has hit the piston, that theory's out, no, because the timing chain is still in, in place, all the time, it's still timed. So, as I put the transmission fluid in the cylinders, and ran that, and, and tried to turn that over, in my brain, I knew that nothing was going to hit because the timing gear is still in place. When it locked up and got, when it locked up because it had, uh, I don't know what you call the hydro lock, when it got hydro locked, I guess they call that, what I'm saying, what it done, if, if it didn't get hydro locked, it would have shoved transmission fluid out that exhaust hole because it would not have been closed. And that was the problem, it was not closed, neither was this closed. So we had four that were not working well. We put the penetrate to them. We tried to clean them off. Um, when Doug left, he had, we had three, two of them working and the two outside ones were not. They were still staying open. Uh, when I come up from the house the other day, this one looked like it had popped up a little bit. This one was still not working. Uh, that's when I decided, or Doug said, called me and said, let's put some transmission fluid in the cylinder and let's put some acetone in there and let it set inside the cylinder. Well, I got anxious when I put that in there. I knew, well, I knew that that was fluid in there and that that would either come out this hole when I turned it over or it would push it shut. That's, that's basically what I was thinking or hoping. Well, it got hydro locked and I'm saying that it pushed that valve shut. I'm saying that because it held transmission fluid in there <coughs> and there's still transmission fluid in there. This valve looks like it's up now. All we did is used, used a trans, or crown penetrate inside the, the valve there and the valve stem and we kept do, working it and working it and working it um, and it has finally come loose. It has done its job. If you want to take it, can you look in there and see the stems or is it too hard or put a light in there? We're just going to put a light in there because I want to show you what it looked like compared, what it looked like, what it looked like compared to what it used to look like. And uh, I have done nothing, I've seen a lot worse on engines that are running, if you know what I'm trying to say, and it's cleaner than most. But as we got her running there, you can see the transmission fluid's there. She's still hydro locked, you know what I'm saying? You see the transmission fluid on that valve. And you can see the stems, how clean they are. The, the stems on that engine are very clean. I've taken, tried to clean them off the rag, tried to wipe them off, use penetrant. See up on top a little bit. You can see them, they look, all look very nice. So anyways, this is what I'm gonna do for the camera. This is not all I'm gonna do, but I just wanna show you, because this is where we left off. I'm gonna pull the plugs out of it. I'm gonna pull the plugs out of it and try to turn it over my hand and see what happens. And I'm just gonna do it slow. I don't wanna get Doug mad at me, I'm working on his engine. I couldn't help but Doug, I'm playing. I just, I couldn't help it, things were going so good, valves are coming loose, you know? But when Doug comes, um, Doug will do, will finish it obviously, Doug will, continue on, all I'm really doing is, or all I have done is pour the transmission fluid in and the acetone and hydrolock it. That's all I've done. <laughs> but what has happened is, is that valve has come up. And so hasn't the, the last one. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the spark plugs out of it. Got lights in your way, baby? No, ice. You want more light somewhere else? Yeah, I can hold it. Okay. I'll just pull this out and then I'll give it to you. I'll give her her lifesaver. So as I pull all the plugs out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to turn it over. Remember, it hydro-locked. So there will be fluid in there unless something's wrong. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, now, let's see, let's see how that come up there. Push that up there, nothing wrong with that in there. I just turned that easy, just nice and easy. As you can see that, Transmission fluid come up in the acetone, so we know it's in there. I did not hurt anything, and the reason I'm saying we we all should know I did not hurt anything because it's still in time. No, it's a non-interference engine. Long as it's in time, they're telling me, or that's what I've been told, nothing will hit. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, so now that we know it's not nothing's wrong with it, there's nothing wrong with this engine whatsoever. Now we know that the valves are working. What I'm, what I'm thinking is that now all really has to happen is we'll get the oil pan off. We'll clean that out. Doug's coming Thursday or Friday. I've got a good friend, Dan, here today. Come down and see me. Uh, 
We got the oil pan we're gonna take off. All, I can say all the valves are working now. What has to happen to really um, fill our content or make everybody happy is, what's gonna happen is we gotta take a compression test. And then we'll find out how much, you know, how much pounds PSI per cylinder that we have and whether it's runnable or not. Where all the valves seem to be working fine, like I mean they look they look good to me, everything's working, everything's up tight, the ones that we were worried about, the four that we were worried about are closing and shutting. I know these are shutting up, it's holding transmission fluid. Um, yeah, I think really what has to happen now, we'll do a little better cleaning. Um, Doug will do with a carburetor, put the carburetors on it. Um, probably do a compression test first to see where it's at. But I think, uh, like I, I am, like I am probably 80% sure that the head does not have to come off. Like or I'm probably 90% sure that the head does not have to come off, that we did the job that has to be done. I hate to say it, I don't hate to say it, I'm happy to say it, that we have, you know, I think we have saved this engine. And we'll know more when we do a compression test on it. I'm not gonna do anything else to it because, you know, Doug was working, like Jolene told me this morning, Doug was working on it, you're messing with it. Just back up a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I wanted to show for the video when I pulled the spark plug out that there was not nothing wrong with it. That's all I wanted to show. That the timing has not been messed, has not been broken. It's not out of time. It's a non-interference engine. That's how I know nothing is going to hit. Because it's in, because the timing chain is not broke. Or the camshafts aren't broke. That's what means with non-interference engine, I think, is that nothing inter will interfere as long as it's in time. And now we know, as I put them spark plugs out, we know that I did not bend anything. I could not bend anything because it was in time. If it's not in time, or if ch the chain is broken, well, yes, you have the chance. Yes, you do. Have not done that. I've hydro-locked it. It means that it has compression in that cylinder, and yeah, I cannot get rid of the fluid. That's what it meant. That's all it meant. It did not hurt anything. It did not do anything wrong other than watch that valve come back. So three spark plugs and four valves. That's what happened to this engine so far. And uh, we've nothing but spent time. Doug has spent some money, I think. We'll have to get him back somehow, but everything's good. That engine still turns over nice. I'm not gonna do any more to it. I'm gonna wait till Doug comes and we'll do a compression test on it. We will show that, and that is simple as that. Uh, as I'm talking about the engine, I asked Jolene what we're doing a video on today. I was gonna talk about the, what we need on the car. There's a few things that we need. We took a little run this morning. We tried to get some radius arms. Um, we're gonna buy some new ones, I guess. We found that we can get some new ones. And what, what has happened here is we're using a, a 65 Ford Mustang front end. Uh, I come from a build that I did for John, a friend of mine. Uh, he goes with us around looking at cars and stuff. This was a front end that we took out. He bought a, a better suspension, a brand new one that um, closed the lower control arms off. They were welded up so they're stronger, like a race one and the polyurethane uh, ball joints and stuff. Uh, anyways, I took the old piece that he had inside, out back, and I've constructed it to made to fit this car. Uh, I'm using it so far because I haven't gone far enough to say I'm not gonna use it but we need the radius arms for this lower control arm and they're coming back and they're gonna hook onto the chassis and they're gonna have a rubber polyurethane mount in there. We have not got those bars. So I do not want to, yeah, I do not want to let the car down, roll it over there until we get there. I like to get those and put them on and then when it rolls over there, I can say everything's in place and I can take it off. I can do everything I want, but that has to be done first. So the radiator, I'm saying is 80%. I know where it's at because it, it fits. I got it fitting. Um, that's where it goes. The front end I have to deal with because I need a couple pieces. The engine I'm very happy with. I think that we have saved it and we are not taking the head off. We are not taking the head off. I'm very happy with what's going on. I'm pretty sure that that thing is going to turn over. We're going to have to clean up a little bit. You know, a lot. We'll have to clean the cylinders all out, get rid of some trans fluid in there and do all that. But yes, it's. I think everything's working. 
Also, if you get something down in the hole of your spark plug or it goes down on top of your piston, put the air down in there with, a, with an air gun. It'll come right back out at you. I know that for sure. I'm positive because I did it yesterday. Oh, I was almost going to do, there's a piece of weld here, a little piece of round ball. I was going to shove it down in there and bring it back out for you. But it, I just don't feel like it's necessary for me to do that. If you know what I'm trying to say. Um, if you have something down there, I'm telling you, stick the air down in it and it'll come back out at you. Just keep putting the air down and it'll come out at you. I, I did it yesterday a whole bunch of times. A whole bunch of stuff that come out. But as I'm sitting there looking at that engine, uh, John called me earlier and wanted me to check and see if he had his rad support here for his truck. And I went through the snow and I found it. And I also found my project for today. I found my project for the day. When we were out there, me and Jolene grabbed this front end stuff, a 56 Chevy Cameo truck that he started a while back. Um, we're getting the, the rust color on it. And uh, we rang some pieces of him from outside. He's gonna try to put the truck, the front end together. His son's helping him, that's a good thing. Uh, but any, anyways, we found this out there. It's a bottom of a air breather for a carburetor, four barrel. And uh, I think it is. Anyway, you wanna put this way, baby? I'll show you for a second. I have the Oldsmobile breather off the old car out there, the 53. I'm not sure what the top of the carburetor says, but I know it does not fit a four barrel carburetor. This top fits that four barrel carburetor really nice. This is the $150 engine that we picked up, or was one of them. Um, and just, I'm just getting some pieces for it. I like the manifolds, the valve pan covers. Thanks, John. We went and got those the other day. So we're just trying to make the engine look, period, with the valve pan covers and the manifolds. And now with the, the breather, I found this outside. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Show you what I'm going to do. And I picked this stuff up or I try to pick this stuff or keep this stuff rocking and rolling at all times. That's what me and Jolene do. We rock and roll that stuff full time. We could one day be going to get a set of manifolds. The next day we'd, we'd be getting a sign. It doesn't, doesn't really much matter. Just as long as we feel like we're going forward and with, and with what we're buying or something that we need. So as we're going on that engine, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to get in here and uh, throw some mud sometime soon. I'll let everybody know. I'm going to throw some mud on the 40. I'm going to pop the door open there. Throw some mud on the 40. And we're going to put some primer on it. And we're maybe pushing the door. I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to bring Doug's car in and clean the paint room up and uh, do a little bit of painting. But I have this breather set up here. It's off the Oldsmobile. off the Oldsmobile, still got the heavy duty type AC on, it's pretty cool, you know, I just like that, if you're doing up a cool engine, trying to keep it retro, like Buddy said, keep it old looking, that fits on top of there, you can buy these, I think, from Speedway or some place, and you can get the, just this breather part that goes on, it has a four barrel in it, that's cool, you can do that, for sure you can, but I have the whole thing, I have all the original piece, I have the, I guess this is the air, oh, there'd be oil in that, would there not be an oil bath breather, I think, I think there'd be a little bit of oil in there in case something dust come in, the oil would grab it, hold on to it. Um, as I pull this off, and I pull this out, this would be the, the breather itself. I think there'd be a little bit of oil, I'm sure. This is the bottom of it, and it does not fit, does not fit the four barrel. So I think that you probably can tell what I probably am gonna do. I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna cut this piece out, I'm going to cut that piece out. I'm going to weld that piece and this piece and make it look so it'll fit that car. So in actual fact, when you maybe look underneath the hood, um, you'll think it's a Nosemobile engine with, a, with an oil bath breather. You know, just a quick look. And it only has to be for whatever, just for your eye or for just for something to do or to make it look like it's old, the engine itself, all the pieces. But I'll cut this open, put that on. Then I can use the oil bath breather on it the whole thing, instead of just using this camera, because you can buy this piece. Um, for me, I would know, I would know a repo from the original, because I've, I've got the original right here, and I know what it looks like. It's got an oil bath on it, and they're, they're both that big, they're quite thick. On the non-original ones, or the aftermarket ones, you just get this 
sort of thing. And that's, that's a great look, believe me, that's a great look. But the original ones, where you think they're older, have this in it. And I want to keep that if I can. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take and cut the bottom out of that. The bottom out of it. So we know we did not hurt the engine because the timing has not been changed and the timing chain is still intact. So we know with that part being that way, no valves have hit. So anybody that says that a valve has hit, you have to readjust and know that it's a non-interference engine and that if the timing is in check, no valves will hit. So we know that, we know no valves are bent. Not at any time has the engine been out of time and hit the valve. It's always been returned over in time. Okay, I'm gonna take a show. And, and, and this is stuff that um, is fun, I think is very fun to do, is to take something and just change it a little bit so I can use it. You know, something like that, I would, I would pick up at a swap meet and knowing that I would change the bottom of it so I could fit any application that I wanted. If you know what I'm trying to say. I just like, I like that it's, it's aired right, it's, it's old, and I'm gonna make it fit something that's new. So I'm gonna double purpose it. I'm gonna make a double purpose, Dan. <laughs> Dan said, get at her. <laughs> like that? That's how it goes around here. Danny's on the management side, and I'm on the working class. Love management. All I'm adding, a lot of them do, but they ain't getting that. That's it. That's right. So, I'm going to take this, put this on here. I'm going to hook up the airline. But you gotta, I really like the conversation on the engine, you know? I really do like the conversation because it made me talk about it. it. Made me talk about it. And I learn, you have to learn as you talk about it. You know, as I'm trying to figure it out, I don't want to hurt the engine, no, worries, no any chance. I want to try to help it as much as I can, you know? And uh, some of the things that we're doing, as long as it stays in time, I think that we're okay. That's what we're saying, we're okay. And we will put the camera down inside the bad boy. Probably when we do a compression test or before we do a compression test. We probably will, no doubt in my mind. On the inside, the sucker looks like that center should fall over as soon as I cut it. We'll see. We'll see. On the, little, on the cut, just make it a little bit better, I think I will, just because it's sticking to the paint. Just going to clean it up a little bit on the paint with this. Just trying to make it a little bit more round, that's all. It really doesn't much matter. It does not matter. Yeah. You don't want the pull.
going to have to give it a thumbs up so far, you know, as I'm trying to, you know, have a relationship with this crown bottle, you know, but it, it's all I've used on it, you know, the penetration fluid must be working to make it work, you know, I know transmission fluid's good, I know all this, you know, all the other products are probably good, but that is what we have used, and everything has come back. Cut that off here. A little shady. Here for a second. Go over to my my tickle trunk. My tickle trunk. Get to clean all the tools up for me. I'm just gonna do it right behind your sweetheart. Nah, I can't get it. I got to get the drill and clean that up a little bit. I do not really want to clean. You got your light there taking that one. Okay, you can use it. What? You can use it. I can use the light there. Just going to clean that for a second. I'm just going to take this extension cord for a minute. My baby's extension cord. Just going to clean the edge of it up so I can pack it in there nice. goes on the curb it goes like that why that being silly Dan I try to shove that in the other way making sure I get the right way I'm just trying to make sure I tacked it in there like that clean this up a it on there you would never see the bottom of this you know unless you took it off so that cut there does not matter to me that pain in there does not matter to me 
If you know what I'm trying to say. You know, you could take and clean it all out and whatever. You'd never get paint on it again. <laughs> Anyways, as I set that in there, that's, that's where she's gonna set, just like that. I'm gonna go around here and tack that. You could weld that all up if you want to and, and put fiberglass on it. And you could make it look like it's never been fixed before. But what I, what, I, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna tack it in there. Then I'll throw the other piece on it and I'll see where we're at. That's what I'm gonna do. Unplug this and put it off. Put that to go in there. Now the welder comes out. This is the stuff I like to do. I no, that's not the welder we want either, is it? I don't think there's any gas in it. Nope, it's not the welder we want. I do like the newer, the newer way they're doing the, the engine compartments. I like, you know, some of them, but I still enjoy, I still enjoy customizing the engine and making it look the way I want it to look, like an, an older piece of equipment. Again, you know, I like the idea of having something look it look aged. Like I've always said, I've always I always like history. History tells us the truth. I really enjoy, I, li I like that. Either it's, it's not in my time, I wouldn't have had a car like that. But, so that's why I probably enjoy it. If you know what I'm trying to tell you. I enjoy the antique of the car. I enjoy the antique. sort of close right there I would say the way that's fitting looks pretty good to me pretty good to me and also that metal is pretty chin well I don't say chintzy but it's pretty thin so if you had any little problem that you thought it was bent one way you can bend it I know one thing I'm gonna turn the power down on B Let's turn it down a little bit I'm just gonna try it in here for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it like that for a minute. Or not leave it like that for a minute. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this in there and try it on the four barrel and see if it's straight or not. And then I'm gonna come out and show back in here. What I'm looking for I'm just gonna stick it on there. Now you know now it fits a four barrel. And then we get the breather on top of that. And it'd be quite a quite a size, you know. Wow. It might even take it up quite a ways. But then again, I find usually an engine is quite a ways down inside the car. And that would be a nice way to fill it, to bring it back up and fill the, the underneath the hood. Um, that's, some, that's, a, that's a pet peeve of mine, is having the engine down too far inside the car, you know? Uh, you see a really nice 32, and you gotta look way down inside to see the engine. I, I enjoy, what I enjoy is the engine brought up in the car you know, so it's a little, see, so it doesn't look like it's way down inside. And you can see the difference in some cars when you look at them. And it's just the way they've been built or fabricated, you know. The original ones, the engine probably would have been down inside. And, uh, and the ones that people have customized or, or made a little different, you'll, you'll notice that the engine is up a little bit. You know, they bring the engine up. You tell the difference, or I can. You can see some cars that they brought the engine up. I want to grab a coat hanger. 
just because it seems to be easier. My coat hanging around anywhere, sweetheart? Dan has bringing us some lights. <laughs> wow. Huh? Man, that's too much light on Dan. Oh, look like a different person. Get some sunglasses. Yeah, I'll put this back on. I'm going to throw a couple more welds on this, and then we'll throw it, together, throw it together. I don't know if this piece goes down any further. Too, you know, I might have to cut this off. I'm not sure yet. I don't think, but we'll see. I might actually just cut it off before I put it in there because that way there will not hit. So I'm just going to take the coat hanger, put it underneath there. Everything looks fine. It's not, you know, I didn't see any big crooked mess that I need to fix. So I'm just going to go along, tack it in there just a little bit better. And that's all I'm going to do is tag it in there and get it close. I find that this tin here is quite thin. Oh, got to keep my ground on or that won't stay. And if you find you get the coat hanger stuck in there, you can do this, just wiggle it off. Sometimes you don't pull it out on time and it gets stuck to your weld. You just break it off, come do it. I would just leave that like that, do a whole bunch to it, um, just grind it off a little bit, you know, take a grinder and smooth it off a little bit, take heads off, clean it up with a drill all the way around, clean all that rust off, best you can make it all shiny, just like this. Then you come along the bottom side and put a little bead of fiberglass in there if you want to and uh, go from there. But as I have that, I'm gonna throw that on. So, what is happening here is, I'll take, put that piece on. And this piece goes in. I want to see if this piece hits is what I gotta do. I just want to get back behind you, sweetheart. So I'm putting this piece on. Now this breather doesn't have to go on this engine, but it can go on any newer four-barrel engine that we need it to fit. So this will go on. I just want to see if it goes down all the way.
fits perfectly. Wonderful. Now I'm going to get the top. It looks quite high up, but it is what it is. Um, that's how, you know, when the engine's down inside or something, you can bring it up to fill the... And then we have our breather that fits our newer carburetor. And now that can be the engine in the car. So that can look, it looks older. You have the, the manifolds. The in, like the valve pan covers, when you see a valve pan cover that has no oil inlet, that means it's a different, it's an older engine. Um, I have an intake with a spout in the front, not here yet, trade with Lindsay. And the manifolds and, and, the, and the breather. That would, when you looked underneath the hood first, you would think that was an older motor. This intake does not go with a Chev engine. This intake goes with actually with the O's, with the Ozenmobile. So this is an Ozenmobile intake. People interchange them all the time. But I am going to put a six pack on this one, I think. I'm not sure. I might even just put the four barrel, might take the four barrel and use this breather and make it look and paint it green, put the engine in the 40 with the other wheel. But I had to change the four barrel on the bottom of it to get it to work. So uh, that's how you do it. If you want an older breather on a, on a newer engine, a newer carburetor, that's exactly how you do it. Don't let nothing stop you. I, I feel like that would make me happy than buying, that would make me way happier than going buying something that's all pretty and shiny, and is to have that. To me, that is something that I enjoy to have. Uh, it's a piece of history, it's something to look at, it's desirable, and it's not something you just have to buy, it's something you have to find and fabricate and make it work. If you know what I mean, there's a lot more involved in something like that than just buying something and throwing it on. I'm very happy with it. And I've got the valve pan covers on wrong. Chevrolet's upside down. Come on. Not on this side. But anyways, that's, that's what's going on. Um, I'm just gonna keep plugging away. Now I'll probably retro this one in. I'll have to find some valve pan covers. I got some John uh, donated to the process. Um, some of the stuff I like and some of the stuff I'm, I wanna change a little bit. But that's where I go with the engines. Uh, there was one guy on TV one time a long time ago. He didn't like um, stuff that wasn't real. Well, you know what? <laughs> a lot of people can't afford what they want, or they, I can't afford, you know, or cannot find a, maybe a, a 327 with you know the right manifolds on it, with the right intake on it. You know, sometimes you can't find that stuff. But yet you can decorate an old engine up an old 305 that you found somewhere and make it look like the exact same thing and be just as happy with it. So if someone does not like um, something that is not authentic and real, it's not yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not yours. But anyways, as that goes, um, that's what I like to do. I like to do that sort of stuff to please myself. And uh, that's a little breather, changing the four barrel on that. Just going out in the snow to find John's stuff give me something to do. It did. You know what I mean? I went up there and found that, um, pulled it inside. I was looking for something to put it, to weld in that. Didn't have anything. And there it be, just like that. Dan's got this place lit up like a Christmas tree. He bring us some new light bulbs, man. Whew. I don't want to look in the mirror now. But anyways, things are going good. It's Wednesday. I can't wait for Doug to come back. Thursday or Friday, he told me he'll come back. But um, I didn't hurt her, Doug. I just... I, I, did, I didn't hurt her. I didn't hurt her. I just put a little transmission fluid in it. Uh, we didn't have the acetonite, or the, whatever it's called, Acet acetone to put in it. And But we did go over that night and get some put in it, so we're ready for you. I think the valves are free. I think we're looking good. If something happens to the engine and it does not work, it's not the end of the, it's not the, end of the world. It's just something that, you know, I'd rather put a little time in it and see if we can get it. And if we do get it, will it not be a great big hurrah? You know what I mean? And if we don't get it, hey man, spirits are up. We kept trying, we kept trying. We did the best we could do. That's what we can tell ourselves. We did the best we can do. Can you say that? Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, YouTubers. I, I like, I, I find it, I'm just getting onto it. Jolene tells me there's a bunch of people that come on early. They're the, they're the students that I, I like. They come up early and they get on. They have a conversation with each, with each other. 
And I know that things are going well because they're all conversating with each other. And as uh, long as everybody shows each other respect, everything's great, man. I like it. Really like it. Have a good one, everybody. Share and like.